In this video, we're going to look at finding averages using our graphics display calculator, our GDC. We're going to look at three types of data that we can do in our graphics display calculator. And that is, first of all, we're going to look at a list of data and how to find the averages from our list of data. So, let's get on with the example. We have our list of numbers here, and the first thing we have to do is to go into stats mode, that's number two, and type our data into list number one. So the data goes down here, scrolling down all of the data. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do some calculations with it. So we're going to use calc, we're going to hit on calc, which is F2, and that will bring us up this new menu along the bottom. We're going to want to do one variable, but first of all we need to set it to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So we click set which is F6 and that takes us to this menu where we can set our information. Now it's the one variable, these top two that we're interested in and the list must be list one or the list that you've used which should be one most of the time and the frequency must be one. If it says list one or list two or something there you need to press F1, this button here to get that one there. We then go back, we hit enter and we go back to this page here and now now that we've set it up correctly we're going to do the one variable analysis so we're going to press F1 for one variable analysis. Now this is the first page that comes up and from here we already have some information. First of all our different averages are we have the mean the mean is known as X bar and that is this top one here. So the mean in this case is equal to 5.57 to two decimal places. The next one we're not really that interested in it's the sum of all these values. If we add them all up we get 78. The next three we don't really need to worry about this is the sum of the value squared, and these two are about what's called standard deviation and variance, which we don't need to know for the IGCSE. The next one, however, can be quite useful sometimes. It tells us that there are 14 bits of data. So there's 14 numbers there. So n tells us that in this list here, n is equal to 14. There are 14 bits of information. So we can calculate x bar by using the sum of x, 78, and dividing by 14, and that gives us this answer here. After that, we can scroll down using the arrows on our calculator, and we reveal the next page. I'm just going to push this one out of the way so it's still around, and we get this page here. And that page, we have at the top, we can still see n, and we have some more information now. We have the minimum value, we have the lower quartile, Q1. We have the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum value. So from here, we can find the median, which is equal to, well, we can see that med is median. So that is equal to 5.5. We can also find the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So the lower quartile is equal to Q1, which is equal to 4. The upper quartile is equal to Q3, which is 8. And we also know the minimum and the maximum. So from the minimum and the maximum, we can find the range. The range is equal to the maximum minus the minimum. So the range is 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. So now if we scroll down, we move this bit out of the way and we can see the last of the um, screens that we would see. And we can see we have the median Q3 and the maximum at the bottom there. And then at the bottom we have the mode. And the mode, we find the mode, we can see the value of the mode is this first one. So the value of the mode is 8.
and that tells us that the most common number in this data is 8. There, there, and there. The next one tells us how many different modes there are. So in this case, there's only one number that's the mode. And the last one tells us how many times that mode appears. So there's 1, 2, 3, 8, so that's what this represents. This first one is the most important, though, because it tells you the mode is 8. So that's how we do it with a list of data. Now we're going to look at how we can do it for a frequency table. Much of the process is very similar. We first of all have to type it into our graphics calculator. The data down list 1 and the frequencies in list 2. Once they are in there, we once again hit calc and that will reveal this menu here and we once again go to set. This time the settings are slightly different. The X list is still list 1 but the frequency, well that was the frequency column that we put into list 2 so we need to make sure this says list 2. If it just says 1 we need to click list and we'll get the option to type which list we want to use 1 to 26 and we want list 2 so the top two parts must say list 1 and list 2 before you carry on. Once they say that, we can go back to this menu here and again we're doing one variable analysis because we only have one set of data. So we hit one var and that reveals the different things. And once again it's the same symbols. The mean, the mean is equal to x bar which in this case is 6.45 that's this one at the top we've got the sum again we've got the ones we don't need we've got n telling us there are 40 things that is if we were to add up the frequency column we would get 40 then we can scroll down and we get the next few bits the minimum value is 3, that's here. The maximum value is 9. And we also get the quartiles in between. So we have the lower quartile is equal to 6. The upper quartile is equal to 7. The median is equal to med, which is 6. And the range is equal to the max 9 minus the min 3 so the range is equal to 9 minus 3 is also 6. Once again we can scroll down and we get this last page here and we can see the mode at the bottom here and the mode is the one with the highest frequency. Well, we can see that from the table, the one with the highest frequency. Well, 14 is the highest frequency, so 6 is the mode. And we can see that in the calculator 2, it tells us the mode is 6 and the frequency of it is 14. So the 6 is the mode, the data. The 14 is how often it appears. In this third and final example, we look at what happens when we have group data. So here, our marks are grouped from 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, and 40 to 49. Our calculator can deal with this, but not in group data. We have to do the first step manually. And remember, when we're dealing with group data, the first thing we have to do is use the midpoints to represent each class. So it's the midpoints we type into list 1. So 0 to 9, the midpoint is 4.5. 10 to 19, it's 14.5. 20 to 29, 24.5. And so on for the rest of them down that column. We then put the frequencies in list 2. And again, we're doing a, calc, so we, a calculation, so we hit calc, and that reveals the options. And we're going to make sure we're set up the right way, so we hit set. Just like with the other frequency table, we need the X list to be list 1, where the data was, the midpoints that we typed in, 
and the frequency to be list 2, where we put those frequencies in. Once that's set up like that, we go back to the previous screen and again we're doing one variable analysis, so we hit one var. Now we have to remember that if we're dealing with group data, these values will only be estimates because we've been using the midpoints instead of the actual values. So often one of these questions will ask you to estimate the mean and explain why it's an estimate. And the reason it is an estimate is because we use the midpoints to represent each group. Once again we're using the same symbols though. We have the mean, that is x with a bar over it, x bar, and that is equal to 29.3. That's this first one here. The next ones on this page we're not interested in, but n might be useful. n tells us that this total frequency here is 219. That might be useful depending on what else we're doing. Now we're going to scroll down and we reveal some more information. We have the min, upper, lower, quartiles, median and the max. Okay, these are a bit different because these are telling us the midpoints we put in. And we don't know the exact midpoints. For group data, to find the quartiles and the median, you should always use a cumulative frequency graph. What we can do, though, is we can say that the median is in the group or the class which has 34.5 as the midpoint. So it's in the class 30 to 39. We don't know where it is in that group, but we know it's in there somewhere. If we want to be more specific, then we use a cumulative frequency graph with this data to find the median. Again, we can carry on scrolling down, and we can see that we have the um, modal values at the bottom here. Again, because we've used the midpoint, it's saying that the mode is 34.5, but that's not true. We know the modal class, the modal class, that is the class that has the most things in it, the modal class is 30 to 39. We don't know exactly the mode, but we know that it, the class that has the biggest number of things in it is that group. So when we're dealing with grouped averages, we have to be a little bit careful with the results we get out of our calculator. They're not exact, they are only estimates, just as if we were to work them out manually. But we have to remember that these all represent midpoints of these classes and not actual values.